In Iran, sex outside marriage is illegal. But half the population under 35 aren't married, and the government's worried they're not playing by the rules. So they're doing something about it. This is the Tebian office, a government-run online Islamic dating institute. Apparently, Iran is facing a marriage crisis, so the authorities have decided to step in and play Cupid. Joining me is Ali Jafari, our official translator approved by the Ministry of Culture. Is this the type of place, Mr. Jafari, you'd come to find a Definitely. Reason, and I have plenty of reasons for it. Apparently, this government website set up 250 marriages this year. And the youth who come here can really take these advices and really make a bright future in, in, in instead of making the wrong choice and end up wasting their life. Salam. Waiting to say hello is Mohammad Reza Sultani, the website's PR man, and Zari Husseini, the chief matchmaker. I quickly realized this is a dating website with a difference. For a start, pictures are banned. عکس قابلیت این رو داره که با فتوشاپ تغییر پیدا بکنه، قشنگ بشه زشت. They expect parents to be present on first dates, but they say that's no barrier to success. They introduce me to one of their clients. The young man who looking for love. Oh really? You're the young man looking for love. Wow. Fantastic. It turns out Reza Tagizade is a success story. Thanks to the team here, he's engaged to be married. He's having free sessions with the website psychologist to prepare him for marriage. Dr. Mohammed Kamand warns him that education and family background matter much more than love. Mr. Jafari translates the key message. Loving at first look or sight is, again, I emphasize, very dangerous. I met my partner, um, love at first sight, I'd say it was, and we're together 10 years. So is it really that dangerous, do you think? I must be the minority, so. <laughs> The singles who click on the website can't choose their potential partners. It's done for them by traditional matchmakers. Here we go. I want to meet them. Oh, wow. There's an army of women in here. <laughs> Are you all matchmakers? Yes. Really? You're surprised? Yes, I'm very surprised. They don't just take clients from the government. Anyone can approach them. This agency is run by Malake Mogadam, Tehran's most famous matchmaker. So, Ms. Mogadam, is everybody here working for you? I It's not just in this room. It's packed in the next room as well, full of matchmakers. They work for free. Matchmaking is an age-old tradition in Iran. It's seen as a religious good deed. Miss Mugadam shows me what she calls her dowry room. This essentially is a room full of donations from very nice people to couples who are starting off, who are starting off in married life, who might need a sewing machine or shoes. The pile of presents is getting bigger but no one's taking them away. The matchmakers get plenty of calls, but the clients are getting more demanding. 
28-year-old Saba Lotfi has come here with her mother, Manzar. She's studying accountancy. So far, she's not met men who added up to much. The next questions are about Islamic values, like listening to music the religious censors haven't cleared. بعد از لحاظ کار و اینا واسه تو مهم نیستش که مثلا اگه طرف یه دیپلم خوب باشه ولی یه پسر خوب و با اعتقادی باشه و مرد زندگی باشه It's a tough question <laughs> این خنده هاست که مکافات برای جامعه ما آورده یه ساختر شده دیگه یقینا الان نسبت به ده سال گذشته ول یقینا سختتر شده تحصیل کرده بودن خود دختر خانوما که وقتی که یه فوق لیسانس میگیرن دیگه آمادگی ندارن با یه آدم دیپلم زندگی کنن در ایوینگ ای ویزت سابه ات هوم Would be the ideal husband for Saba in your opinion. Aval akhlaq is khale khush akhlaq khub bashe badam dige iman dashte bashe. Badam puldar shodan. What your mum just described does that sound good to you? I mean no but I don't khob khosh kerd bashe dige. Saba's brother seems uncomfortable. Tu Iran in rasm wujud nadare ke dokhtar dan mal shohar begarde. خیلی کم پیش میاد ولی به طور سنتی به طور سنتی همین چیزی وجود نداره مگه نمیدونی شما چی has told us about one of her university classes a compulsory course on marriage the group is led by Ali Sabour a professor of Islamic education also a matchmaker برای نیاز جنسی انسان راهکارهایی است که مثال قابل تصور هست بهترین از حضور شما راهکار برای پاسخ به این نیاز بحث ازدواج چند دارید مستر جفاری استپس این هی لیوید این دی یو اس ای فور ایرز اند هاز ویوز اند دی سیچویشن دیر دست در دبیرستان هست حد اقل میگم من کف فقط دارم میام 10 تا دوست پسر از میکنه پس دو پسر هم میکنه بعد من دانشگاه تو دانشگاه هم همین مسئله اتفاق میفته بنابراین یک دختر حد درقل قد از ازدواج 20 تا پسر رو به قول خود چی میگن تیست کردن که غم در این قضیه در سراشیلی سقود از این واقعیتی این هم حرف من نیست این تیران مور یونگ پیپل نو لیف تگیدر ویداوت بینگ مارید سمتنگ دات شاک سابا اصلا از اسلام و دین و خدا و اینا دور شدم برای همین به همچین چیزی رفتم One of her fellow students says he can't get married even though he wants to خیلی میبینم میگن ازدواج کنه رهبر سخنرانی میکنن ازدواج کنه بچه دار شده من در سن 21 سالگی 22 سالگی و 23 سالگی سه بار خواستگاری رفتم اما هر وقت که مراجعه میکردم و برد شما یه پسر بیسته نیست In Iran, the tradition of getting parental permission for marriage remains strong. So if you don't have a good job or get on with the family, you're in trouble, even if you're deeply in love. Zara? Zara. Zare? So Ali, Zare is your future wife to be, is that right? And Zara is very evidently Zara's identical twin. I have to ask you, Zara, was it love at first sight? Ali's 28, 
Zari and Zara are 25. He's a filmmaker. Zari is an illustrator. They met at work four months ago. They want to get married as soon as possible, but first their parents need to agree financial terms. There's a very beautiful and respectful dynamic between Ali and Zare. And even though they have chosen not to be intimate before marriage, it's so obvious that they're head over heels and deeply in love with each other. My scarf was a little bit too forward, so we're, we're going into quite a religious ceremony. So we need to cover up. Tonight, Zore will meet up with Ali at the house of a family friend. It's the date when Shia Muslims remember the death of Fatima, the daughter of the Prophet Muhammad. It's such an emotional thing. People are in tears out there. And it's so interesting to see Zara, Zare and Ali and their dedication to their religion. Cooking a big pot of soup, where apparently you can make a wish as you stir the soup. Thank you. Zara and Ali are also praying for their own future together. Their families are meeting up in three days' time, and they're hoping they'll be given permission to marry. What are you wishing for? Do you think this will work? Zari and Ali are following tradition, but other people their age are pushing the envelope. Apparently, we've just walked in on a full-blown Iranian-style photo shoot. And according to these guys, these photos are just to upload on Instagram. <laughs> This group of friends are studying psychology. They tell me they're all single, but go out in group dates. Is this you? Yeah. Oh, wow. Stunning. I never get that many. <laughs> this is serious dedication for social media. I'm very, very impressed. <laughs> Before I came to Iran, I was led to believe that boys and girls were not allowed to hang out together. That's obviously not true. I was to go to the house and I was going to go to the house. I was going to go to the house and I was to go to the there are so much misconceptions um, about Iran, and so it should be very interesting to observe it from close, from up close, that, you know, there is so much freedom here. Of course, I'd conducted this conversation carefully, avoiding sensitive topics like banned dating websites, parties with alcohol, or sex before marriage. This is not correct. All of our hair should be... Oh. <laughs> the social scene here is amazingly complex and it seems to be both subtle and quite restrictive at the same time. And because of that, some young Iranians feel trapped somewhere between Islamic culture and Western culture and they're not quite sure where their identity lies. I'm rejoining Saba, who's waiting to hear news from the dating agency. 
Sab is taking me in a spot of shopping before she gets a call from Miss Mogadam. <laughs> so it's 3.30 and I know Miss Mogadam has promised to call, so mm, we shall wait and see. <laughs> I'm nervous for you, Saba. She tells me she's a romantic at heart. Do you believe in love at first sight? <laughs> For accountancy student Saba, Miss Mogadam's found a fellow accountant. In an ideal world, she says she wouldn't use a matchmaker at all. The matches seem a bit predictable. Saba's a conservative girl. She won't go on casual dates or break the rules. But she wants romance, and that's difficult. She didn't meet up with either of the matchmaker's men. We've joined Ali on the drive to Zare's home. Their families are meeting to negotiate the terms of the marriage, a process known as Bale Barun. Do Zare's family think you're the right match for their daughter? I think we can really relate to you, Ali. <laughs> Do you feel like the love between you and Zari can survive obstacles like this? Zohre, with the attention of the fact that we had with him, he knows that I'm going to be successful and get to the place. But well, I'm not the only one. We're not the only one. But you have a lot of attention. Zari's parents like Ali. But her mum says she and her family have concerns. Are you all a bit nervous? Ali's father is a cleric. Zari's dad is a retired teacher. Her parents want to make sure she's provided for. There's a number of things to discuss today. The trickiest is a monetary guarantee that Ali must pay to Zari if she ever demands it. It's paid in gold coins and is essentially an insurance policy for wives. It's called a mechie. Zari and Ali try to talk alone upstairs, but they're joined by her dad. Her parents want her to get 114 gold coins. That's 23,000 pounds. Ali thinks it's too much, and he can't afford it. <laughs> Ali offers 14 gold coins, about 3,000 pounds. Ali's father is a 
آبجیاشو میدونی چی میگه میگن اگه علی آقا دو زهره رو خیلی دوست داره خیلی دوست داره آقا ارزشش سکه نیست ارزشش بیش از سکه است آقا من همین بوله علی's parents side with him her parents aren't budging صد چهارده تا من که پدر دختر هستم صد چهارده تا که با تو قوالش باشه Things are getting tense, and they ask us to stop filming. That was nearly four hours of negotiations, and on two occasions, Ali and Zori had to leave the room. Hello. How are you guys after that? The decision is now out of their hands. تو این داستان به همین جا خط نمیشه این داستان ادامه داره ادامه شو بعد بیان دیگه از ما تحقیق کنن بپرسن ببینن چی شد We leave without knowing the final outcome. The young Iranians I've met want to marry someone they love. They also want to obey the rules of their faith and their parents. But it's hard to reconcile these different aims. No wonder so many find it easier to stay single. After we left Iran, we got a message. همه اوم بر ندارم سر از این خمار مستی که هنوز من نبودم که تو در دلم نشستی سلام ما باغ فین کاشانی اگه بخوام از اتفاقات گذشته بگم واقعا روزای خیلی سخت و پر درد و رنجی رو پشت سر گذاشتیم. دور خانم من نمیدونم به تو چه جوری گذشت. علی آقا خودش بهتر می‌دونه به چه چی گذشت. خیلی اذیت شدم. حتی شبای بود که اصلا خوب نه خواب خوابم نه نمی آید به چشم من. و مهریم شد از قرار یک جلد قرآن کریم. یه شاخه نبات. سفر زیارتی به کربلا معلا. سر چهارده تا they got married a week later thanks for watching this classic unreported world episode click the logo to subscribe for more award-winning documentaries from the unreported world team we upload videos every Wednesday and Sunday keeping you up to date with content from all over the world